So what we will do next is to look at an example or a few examples which may require us to resolve a vector into its components before we can actually proceed to finding the resultant of um, uh, a few vectors. So let's look at this example. Suppose we have two forces acting like this. So let's say this angle is 30 degrees and what we have here is a force of say 10 newtons and this force is 15 newtons and we want to find the resultant of these two forces. Now so far we've looked at perpendicular forces or perpendicular vectors and we've been able to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the resultant. So of course to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant and we use one of the trig ratios um, commonly tan to find the angle that the resultant makes typical with the horizontal right now in this particular case the two forces are acting at an angle but it is not a right angle and therefore we cannot use Pythagoras theorem right so what will we do we will resolve one of these forces into its respective components and when that is done we will then have only perpendicular components we will have horizontal components and vertical components and then we'll be able to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the resultant of these forces and a trig ratio to find the direction. So let's proceed. Now the question might be which of these two forces to resolve? Now typically when faced with a situation like this we examine it and we leave any horizontal or vertical forces or vectors untouched and resolve any other vector which is acting at an angle to the horizontal or to the vertical, right? So we leave any horizontal or vertical vector untouched and resolve any other vector which is acting at a non-right angle to the horizontal or to the vertical. Now in this particular case, the 15 Newton force can be treated as being horizontal. And so what we will do is to resolve the 10 Newton force into its components, right? Now let's focus on the 10 Newton force for a little while. So you can represent the 10 Newton force. So this is 10 Newtons and it is acting at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, right? So, so far we've seen that when it comes to resolving a force or a vector into its components, it will have two components typically. Um, in this case, it will have a horizontal component and it will also have a vertical component and this of course will be a right angle now usually the component which is adjacent to the angle will be in terms of the cosine of the angle and that will be the horizontal component in this particular case so in this particular case it will have a horizontal component 10 cos 30 degrees and it will have a vertical component in terms of sine which will be 10 sine 30 degrees, right? So we can work these out. 10 sine 30, sine of 30 is equal to 0.5. So this will be equal to 5 newtons and cos of 30, 0.8666. So this will give us 8.7 newtons to one decimal place, right? So these are the horizontal and the vertical components of the 10 newton force respectively. Now, once that has been done, this force has been resolved into its components then whenever we, we continue with the diagram we'll be using the components and not the actual force itself so what we then do is to redraw our diagram and we'll include these components so now that we resolve the 10 newton force into its components what we will now have is we will have a vertical component or a vertical force and we will also have a horizontal force the vertical force is the vertical component of the 10 newton force since of course in the original diagram there was no vertical force so therefore this would be 5 newtons now in the horizontal direction initially we had a 15 newton force right acting to the right we resolve the 10 newton force into its components and we see that the horizontal component is also acting to the right and as a magnitude of 8.7 newtons 
So because these two horizontal components are acting in the same direction, we will simply add their magnitudes to give a single horizontal component. So 15 newtons plus 8.7 newtons gives us 23.7 newtons. So now basically what we have is um, perpendicular forces, a vertical one of magnitude 5 newtons and a horizontal one of magnitude 23.7 newtons. So we'll just redraw this diagram. So they run from tip to tail and then we'll complete our triangle. And of course, we'll apply Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude of our resultant and a trig ratio to find the, um, the angle. So this one, of course, is 23.7 newtons. This is 5 newtons. And we have our resultant... So it's a double arrow, and let's call this FR. And it's more common to give the angle with respect to the horizontal. So let's call this angle theta. Right? So what we'll then do is to use Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant FR and the trig ratio to find the angle theta. So by Pythagoras' theorem, FR squared is equal to 5 squared plus 23.7 squared. And so this gives us 25 plus, so 23.7 squared, or squared, gives us 561.7. So this is 561.7. So when you add these two, we get, this would be 586, Point seven, right? And if you want to put the units, because it is F squared or 4 squared, it will be Newton squared, of course. And it therefore means that FR will be equal to the square root of 586.7 Newton squared, right? And that gives us... I'm a stupid calculator, boy. Err... Uh. So square root of 587, where's the square root on this calculator? Square root, square root, square root. Oh gosh, all right. Second function squared, square root 586.7 equal. So this gives us 24.2 newtons. So the magnitude of the resultant force is 24.2 newtons. Now we're not finished because of course, you know, being a force, um, it is a vector quantity, and not only does it have magnitude, it also has direction. And in this case, to find the direction, we'll find the angle theta. So since we have the opposite, we have the adjacent, well, we know also of the hypotenuse, we could use any of the three trig ratios, but it's just commonplace to use tan, since in most cases we have the opposite and we have the adjacent. All right? So we say that tan theta... equals opposite over adjacent, so this is equal to 5 over 23.7. So we have tan theta, that should be a little bit greater than um, mm, 0.2. So 5 divided by, 5 divided by 23.7, right, so 0 0.211, and therefore theta, is equal to the tan inverse of 0.211. So theta is equal to, so second function tan, second function answer equal 11.9 degrees. The theta equals 11.9 degrees, and of course that would be to the 23.7 Newton force. And so therefore we can say now that FR is equal to 24, 0.2 degrees at 11.9 degrees to the so let's pause for a while so we want to state the angle with respect to the horizontal but of course um, since in the original diagram the 15 newton force was given as the horizontal force instead of writing to the horizontal we'd put 11.9 degrees 
to the 50 newton force. So the resultant force FR is equal to 24.2 degrees at 11.9 degrees to the 15 newton force. Right? So in this example, I mean, let's just run through. We were given um, a situation where two forces act at an angle to each other. So it was not a right angle, and therefore we could not use Pythagoras' theorem. However, what we were able to do is to resolve one of these forces into its components. And when we did that, we were ended up with perpendicular forces. And we then used Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant. And we used one of the trig ratios to find the angle that the resultant made, in this case, to the horizontal.